The art of Europe encompasses the history of visual art in Europe. European prehistoric art started as mobile rock and cave painting art, and was characteristic of the period between the Paleolithic and the Iron Age. Written histories of European art often begin with the art of the ancient Middle East and the ancient Aegean civilizations, dating from the 3rd millennium BC. Parallel with these significant cultures, art of one form or another existed all over Europe, wherever there were people, leaving signs such as carvings, decorated artifacts and huge standing stones. However a consistent pattern of artistic development within Europe becomes clear only with the art of ancient Greece adopted and transformed by Rome and carried with the empire across much of Europe, North Africa and the Middle East. The influence of the art of the classical period who axed and waned throughout the next 2,000 years, seeming to slip into a distant memory in parts of the medieval period, to re-emerge in the Renaissance, suffer a period of what some early art historians viewed as decay during the Baroque period to reappear in a refined form in neoclassicism and to be reborn in postmodernism. Before the 1800s, the Christian Church was a major influence upon European art. The commissions of the Church, architectural, painterly and sculptural, providing the major source of work for artists. The history of the Church was very much reflected in the history of art during this period. In the same period of time there was renewed interest in heroes and heroines, tales of mythological gods and goddesses, great wars, and bizarre creatures which were not connected to religion. Secularism has influenced European art since the classical period. While most art of the last 200 years has been produced without reference to religion and often with no particular ideology at all, on the other hand, European art has often been influenced by politics of one kind or another, of the state, of the patron and of the artist. European art is arranged into a number of stylistic periods, which, historically, overlap each other as different styles flourished in different areas. Broadly the periods are, Classical, Byzantine, Medieval, Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque, Rococo, Neoclassical, Modern and Postmodern. Prehistoric Art European prehistoric art is an important part of the European cultural heritage. Prehistoric art history is usually divided into four main periods. Stone Age, Neolithic, Bronze Age, and Iron Age. Most of the remaining artifacts of this period are small sculptures and cave paintings. Much surviving prehistoric art is small portable sculptures, with a small group of female Venus figurines such as the Venus of Willendorf found across Central Europe. The 30 cm tall Lohenmensch figurine of about 30,000 BCE has hardly any pieces that can be related to it. The swimming reindeer of about 11,000 BCE is one of the finest of a number of Magdalenian carvings in bone or antler of animals in the art of the Upper Paleolithic. Though they are outnumbered by engraved pieces, which are sometimes classified as sculpture, with the beginning of the Mesolithic in Europe figurative sculpture greatly reduced and remained a less common element in art than relief decoration of practical objects until the Roman period. Despite some works such as the Gundestrup cauldron from the European Iron Age and the Bronze Age Trundholm Sun Chariot, the oldest European cave art dates back 40,800 and can be found in the El Castillo Cave in Spain. Other cave painting sites include Lasso, Cave of Altamira, Grata de Cusic, Peshmel, Cave of Nio, Chalva Cave, Font de Gome, Cresswell Crags, Nottinghamshire, England, Kola Boia Cave from Romania and Magura, Belogradchik, Bulgaria. Rock painting was also performed on cliff faces, but few of those have survived because of erosion. One well-known example is the rock paintings of Estuvan Zalmi in the Saimar area of Finland. When Marcelino Sanz de Sotoila first encountered the Magdalenian paintings of the Altamira Cave, Cantabria, Spain in 1879, the academics of the time considered them hoaxes. 
Recent reappraisals and numerous additional discoveries have since demonstrated their authenticity, while at the same time stimulating interest in the artistry of Upper Paleolithic peoples. Cave paintings, undertaken with only the most rudimentary tools, can also furnish valuable insight into the culture and beliefs of that era. The rock art of the Iberian Mediterranean basin represents a very different style, with the human figure the main focus, often seen in large groups, with battles, dancing and hunting all represented, as well as other activities and details such as clothing. The figures are generally rather sketchily depicted in thin paint, with the relationships between the groups of humans and animals more carefully depicted than individual figures. Other less numerous groups of rock art, many engraved rather than painted, show similar characteristics. The Iberian examples are believed to date from a long period perhaps covering the Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Early Neolithic. Prehistoric Celtic art comes from much of Iron Age Europe and survives mainly in the form of high-status metalwork skillfully decorated with complex, elegant and mostly abstract designs, often using curving and spiral forms. There are human heads and some fully represented animals. But full-length human figures at any size are so rare that their absence may represent a religious taboo. As the Romans conquered Celtic territories, it almost entirely vanishes, but the style continued in limited use in the British Isles. And with the coming of Christianity revived there in the insular style of the early Middle Ages, ancient classical art, the Minoan culture is regarded as the oldest civilization in Europe. The Minoan culture existed in Crete and consisted of four periods, prepalatial, protopalatial, neopalatial, and the postpalatial period between 3650 BC and 1100 BC. Not much of the art remained from the prepalatial times, and most of artifacts still existing today are cycladic statuettes and pottery fragments. The most prosperous period of the Cretan civilization was Neopalatial period and most of the artifacts are from this era. A large number of artifacts from the Protopalatial can be seen today in Cretan museums. Pottery, most popular in the Protopalatial period, was characterized by thin-walled vessels, subtle, symmetrical shapes, elegant spouts, and decorations, and dynamic lines. Dark and light values were often contrasted in Minoan pottery. The spontaneity and fluidity of the protopalatial period later were transformed to a more stylized form of art with dissociation of naturalism in the neopalatial period. The palaces served as organizational, commercial, artistic, worshipping, and agricultural centers in the Cretan civilization. Cretan palaces were built without defensive walls and exhibited a central courtyard which was embraced by a number of buildings. The central courtyard served as the main meeting place of the people. The palaces had throne rooms, cult chambers, and theaters where people could gather at special events. Columns and staircases were part of the artistic expression and it is believed that they served as metaphorical elements. The Minoan palaces are richly painted with paintings. Minoan painting was unique in that it used wet fresco techniques. It was characterized by small wastes, fluidity, and vitality of the figures and was seasoned with elasticity, spontaneity, vitality, and high contrasting colors. Not much of the sculpture survived from the Minoan civilization. The best-known example of sculptures is the snake goddess figurine. The sculpture depicts a goddess or a high priestess holding a snake in both hands, dressed in traditional Minoan attire, cloth covering the whole body and leaving the breasts exposed. Exquisite metalwork was also a characteristic of the Minoan art. Minoan metal masters worked with imported gold and copper and mastered techniques of wax casting, embossing, gilding, nilo, and granulation. Ancient Greece had great painters, great sculptors, and great architects. The Parthenon is an example of their architecture that has lasted to modern days. Greek marble sculpture is often described as the highest form of classical art. 
Painting on the pottery of ancient Greece and ceramics gives a particularly informative glimpse into the way society in ancient Greece functioned. Black figure vase painting and red figure vase painting gives many surviving examples of what Greek painting was. Some famous Greek painters on wooden panels who are mentioned in texts are Apelles, Zexus and Parasius. However no examples of ancient Greek panel paintings survive, only written descriptions by their contemporaries or by later Romans. Zexus lived in 5, 6 BC and was said to be the first to use sfumato. According to Pliny the Elder, the realism of his paintings was such that birds tried to eat the painted grapes. Apelles is described as the greatest painter of antiquity for perfect technique in drawing, brilliant color and modeling. Roman art was influenced by Greece and can in part be taken as a descendant of ancient Greek painting and sculpture, but was also strongly influenced by the more local Etruscan art of Italy. Roman sculpture is primarily portraiture derived from the upper classes of society as well as depictions of the gods. However, Roman painting does have important unique characteristics. Among surviving Roman paintings are wall paintings, many from villas in Campania, in southern Italy, especially at Pompeii and Herculaneum. Such painting can be grouped into four main styles or periods and may contain the first examples of trompe l'oeil, pseudo-perspective, and pure landscape. Almost the only painted portraits surviving from the ancient world are a large number of coffin portraits of bust form found in the late antique cemetery of Alphaeum. They give an idea of the quality that the finest ancient work must have had. A very small number of miniatures from late antique illustrated books also survive, and a rather larger number of copies of them from the early medieval period. Early Christian art grew out of Roman popular and later imperial art and adapted its iconography from these sources. The western side of the Parthenon on the Acropolis of Athens Bustive, Mondragon, Antonus, 130 AD, Medieval. Most surviving art from the medieval period was religious in focus, often funded by the church. Powerful ecclesiastical individuals such as bishops, communal groups such as abbeys, or wealthy secular patrons. Many had specific liturgical functions, processional crosses and altarpieces, for example. One of the central questions about medieval art concerns its lack of realism. A great deal of knowledge of perspective in art and understanding of the human figure was lost with the fall of Rome. But realism was not the primary concern of medieval artists. They were simply trying to send a religious message, a task which demands clear iconic images instead of precisely rendered ones. Time period 6th century to 15th century Byzantine Byzantine art overlaps with or merges with what we call early Christian art until the iconoclasm period of 730 to 843 when the vast majority of artwork with figures was destroyed. So little remains that today any discovery sheds new understanding. After 843 until 1453 there is a clear Byzantine art tradition. It is often the finest art of the Middle Ages in terms of quality of material and workmanship, with production centered on Constantinople. Byzantine art's crowning achievement were the monumental frescoes and mosaics inside domed churches, most of which have not survived due to natural disasters and the appropriation of churches to mosques. Early medieval art migration period art is a general term for the art of the barbarian peoples who moved into formerly Roman territories. Celtic art in the 7th and 8th centuries saw a fusion with Germanic traditions through contact with the Anglo-Saxons creating what is called the Hiberno-Saxon style or insular art, which was to be highly influential on the rest of the Middle Ages. Merovingian art describes the art of the Franks before about 800, when Carolingian art combined insular influences with a self-conscious classical revival developing into Ottonian art. 
Anglo-Saxon art is the art of England after the Insular period. Illuminated manuscripts contain nearly all the surviving painting of the period, but architecture, metalwork and small carved work in wood or ivory were also important media. Romanesque Romanesque art refers to the period from about 1000 to the rise of Gothic art in the 12th century. This was a period of increasing prosperity, and the first to see a coherent style used across Europe from Scandinavia to Switzerland. Romanesque art is vigorous and direct, was originally brightly colored, and is often very sophisticated. Stained glass and enamel on metalwork became important media, and larger sculptures in the round developed, although high relief was the principal technique. Its architecture is dominated by thick walls, and round-headed windows and arches, with much carved decoration. Gothic Gothic art is a variable term depending on the craft, place and time. The term originated with Gothic architecture in 1140, but Gothic painting did not appear until around 1200, when it diverged from Romanesque style. Gothic sculpture was born in France in 1144 with the renovation of the Abbey Church of S. Dennis and spread throughout Europe. By the 13th century it had become the international style, replacing Romanesque. International Gothic describes Gothic art from about 1360 to 1430, after which Gothic art merges into Renaissance art at different times in different places. During this period forms such as painting, in fresco and on panel, become newly important, and the end of the period includes new media such as prints. Renaissance the Renaissance is characterized by a focus on the art of ancient Greece and Rome, which led to many changes in both the technical aspects of painting and sculpture, as well as to their subject matter. It began in Italy, a country rich in Roman heritage as well as material prosperity to fund artists. During the Renaissance, painters began to enhance the realism of their work by using new techniques in perspective, thus representing three dimensions more authentically. Artists also began to use new techniques in the manipulation of light and darkness, such as the tone contrast evident in many of Titian's portraits and the development of sfumato and chiaroscuro by Leonardo da Vinci. Sculptors, too, began to rediscover many ancient techniques such as contrapposto. Following with the humanist spirit of the age, art became more secular in subject matter, depicting ancient mythology in addition to Christian themes. This genre of art is often referred to as Renaissance classicism. In the North, the most important Renaissance innovation was the widespread use of oil paints, which allowed for greater color and intensity. From Gothic to the Renaissance during the late 13th century and early 14th century, much of the painting in Italy was Byzantine in character, notably that of Duccio of Siena and Cimabue of Florence, while Pietro Cavallini in Rome was more Gothic in style. In 1290 Giotto began painting in a manner that was less traditional and more based upon observation of nature. His famous cycle of the Scrovegni Chapel, Padua, is seen as the beginnings of a Renaissance style. Other painters of the 14th century were carried the Gothic style to great elaboration and detail. Notable among these painters are Simone Martini and Gentile da Fabriano. In the Netherlands, the technique of painting in oils rather than tempera, led itself to a form of elaboration that was not dependent upon the application of gold leaf and embossing but upon the minute depiction of the natural world. The art of painting textures with great realism evolved at this time. Dutch painters such as Jan van Eyck and Hugo van der Goes were to have great influence on late Gothic and early Renaissance painting. Early Renaissance The ideas of the Renaissance first emerged in the city-state of Florence, Italy. The sculptor Donatello returned to classical techniques such as contrapposto and classical subjects like the unsupported nude. His second sculpture of David was the first freestanding bronze nude created in Europe since the Roman Empire. 
The sculptor and architect Brunel Ishi studied the architectural ideas of ancient Roman buildings for inspiration. Masaccio perfected elements like composition, individual expression, and human form to paint frescoes, especially those in the Brancacci Chapel, of surprising elegance, drama, and emotion. A remarkable number of these major artists worked on different portions of the Florence Cathedral. Brunelleschi's dome for the cathedral was one of the first truly revolutionary architectural innovations since the Gothic flying buttress. Donatello created many of its sculptures. Giotto and Lorenzo Ghiberti also contributed to the cathedral. High Renaissance High Renaissance artists include such figures as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo Buonarroti, and Raffaello Sanzio. The 15th century artistic developments in Italy mature during the 16th century, accounting for the designations Early Renaissance for the 15th century and High Renaissance for the 16th century. Although no singular style characterizes the High Renaissance, the art of those most closely associated with this period, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, Michelangelo, and Titian, exhibits an astounding mastery, both technical and aesthetic. High Renaissance artists created works of such authority that generations of later artists relied on these artworks for instruction. These exemplary artistic creations further elevated the prestige of artists. Artists could claim divine inspiration, thereby raising visual art to a status formerly given only to poetry. Thus, painters, sculptors, and architects came into their own, successfully claiming for their work a high position among the fine arts. In a sense, 16th-century masters created a new profession with its own rights of expression and its own venerable character. Northern art up to the Renaissance early Netherlandish painting developed the technique of oil painting to allow greater control in painting minute. Detail with realism. Jan van Eyck was the A figure in the movement from illuminated manuscripts to panel paintings. Hieronymus Bosch, a Dutch painter, is another important figure in the Northern Renaissance. In his paintings, he used religious themes, but combined them with grotesque fantasies, colorful imagery, and peasant folk legends. His paintings often reflect the confusion and anguish associated with the end of the Middle Ages. Albrecht Dürer introduced Italian Renaissance style to Germany at the end of the 15th century, and dominated German Renaissance art. Time period. Italian Renaissance. Late 14th century to early 16th century. Northern Renaissance. 16th century.